In Israel, Conservatives are celebrating after exit polling showed former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his allies have a strong chance of winning Tuesday's election. While actual results could still swing the outcome, it appears the veteran leaders Likud and allied religious and right-wing parties are heading for a parliamentary majority. Music, cheers and fanfare as former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu approaches the stage to talk to his supporters. But it's not a victory, yet. One thing is already clear. Our way, the Likud's way, has proven itself. I remind you that from 52 seats in the last election, we are now on the verge of a very big victory. Voters headed back to the ballot box for the fifth time in four years, hoping that this time the result would pave a way out of the political deadlock that's gripped the country since 2019. That's when the former Prime Minister was indicted on corruption charges. Now he might be making a comeback. His corruption charges haven't put a dent in his loyal support base. To form a coalition government, candidates need 61 out of 120 Knesset seats. Final polls predict Netanyahu's conservatives and allied right-wing and ultra-orthodox parties would win between 61 and 62 seats, giving them a wafer-thin majority. Netanyahu's main opponent is the current caretaker Prime Minister Yair Lapid, head of the centrist Yesh Atid party. His diverse bloc is lagging slightly behind, but he's urged his supporters not to lose hope. Tonight is going to stretch on for two days. Until the last envelope is counted, nothing is over. And nothing is final. And we wait patiently, even if we don't have patience, for the final results. If Netanyahu does win, his alliance with firebrand West Bank settler Itamar Ben Gvir and far right leader Bezalel Smotrich could mean he would be at the head of one of Israel's most right wing governments ever. That is, if he can avoid more of the political turmoil that ousted him in the first place. And as votes are still being counted, let's go to DW correspondent Rebecca Ritters in Jerusalem. Before the latest, Rebecca, Benjamin Netanyahu claims he's on the brink of a, quote, a very large victory. Is he really? Well, if you read the international media, Gerhard, they're calling a, a razor-thin majority, but in Israel, razor-thin uh, can mean something quite large indeed. Uh, that we're able to fairly confidently predict the outcome of this election the morning after is something that hasn't happened in Israel in many years. I mean, of course, these are preliminary results that must be stressed. This is not the final count. Around about 45 percent of the vote has so far been counted. But analysts here are predicting that this uh, will reflect the final results that are due out uh, by the end of tomorrow. Um, on the question, though, of to be be or not to be be, uh, this is a very resounding vote of confidence in favour for Israel's uh, longest serving prime minister. His party's maintained uh, the number of seats that they had in the last election and he's been bolstered by the huge success of, successes of his far-right allies. You mentioned uh, the far-right allies there. This represents a clear shift to the right. Uh, what would another Netanyahu-led coalition then mean for Israel and indeed the world? Well, exactly what you just said there, Gerhard. This is domestically uh, a clear shift to the right for Israel. Uh, the far-right parties, if you look at the numbers, they look to get as many, if not more, seats as was predicted in the lead-up to this election, making them 
the third largest party in the new parliament, potentially. Uh, they will, that will make them, therefore, a kingmaker in any Netanyahu government. They've been demanding pretty key ministries, most notably that of security and the interior. Now, that would be, if they're successful in that, that would be disastrous for Palestinians, both living in Israel and under occupation in the West Bank. Ben Gvir, one of the leaders of those far-right parties, has been calling for the expulsion of so-called disloyal uh, citizens, uh, both Arab and Jews, and the death penalty for terrorists. He himself has been seen in Palestinian neighborhoods brandishing a gun, uh, inciting violence. So it, the, this would you know, be some very far-right policies. Um, internationally, of course, this is also uh, going to be a problem for Benjamin Netanyahu, who's it's, it remains to be seen how the international allies will react to having such far-right, even extreme views uh, in an Israeli government. Now, the corruption trial still hangs over Netanyahu. What impact will his apparent victory have on this trial? Well, that's right. I mean, this election was existential for Bibi Netanyahu, who's facing three charges of corruption. He's been indicted on one of those charges. And his party and his coalition partners on the right have been campaigning on a sweeping overhaul of the judicial system that would uh, broaden and even extend his immunity as sitting PM and even possibly cancel the charges. Now, he campaigned saying that this wouldn't be, uh, they wouldn't be retrospective and they, it wouldn't affect him. But that remains to be seen if those changes were to go through. Now, in Israel today, a sitting prime minister doesn't have to resign until he's found guilty of those charges. And that could all uh, become a moot point if, the, if this government gets in and if these changes are made in the parliament. The correspondent Rebecca Ritt is there in Jerusalem for us. Thank you, Rebecca.